Okay, so just coming up to five o'clock here in London, just wanted to have a, a brief recap of some of the main events for today. Uh, I know Sam normally does this this wrap up, but uh, he's still obviously monitoring this Fed's Powell testimony in the Q&A session. So just wanted to really run over some of the main market moves and the reasonings behind uh, what happened happened in that respect. So first of all, as you can see, you're really going to focus on the main move of the day. And as we were talking about in the briefing, it was always going to come down to what did or didn't Fed's Powell say. This is the first kind of formal big uh, speech that he's made. Uh, in the new role of leadership of the Federal Reserve. And as you can see, we've got uh, dollar appreciation. Both the major pairs have come under some pressure post uh, his initial commentary. Gold is lower, equities down, and T notes are down. So given the cross-asset class movement, this is obviously quite telling that the markets have perceived what he has said in a relatively hawkish way. Uh, but it's not just about uh, Jerome Powell because we did have some economic data coming out of the US earlier in the session uh, so let me get you up to speed with the main US number we had and we did have uh, durable goods and trade balance were largely brushed, brushed aside what did capture a bit of attention though was the strength of the conference board US consumer confidence figure and that's because uh, as you can see here, consumer confidence in the US has improved to its highest level since November of 2000. When you start looking at the breakdown, so despite the recent stock market volatility, so that short-term correction we had at the beginning of the month, consumers expressed greater optimism about short-term prospects for business and labor market conditions, as well as their financial prospects Overall, consumers remain quite confident that the economy will continue expanding at a strong pace in the months ahead. So that was the kind of uh, one of the first elements, if you like, that led to a little bit more uh, of, a, of a hawkish afternoon that we've had. And then when Powell's comments have come out, he's basically justified the fact that the Fed will have further rate increases. We know this already for March, the federal or Fed funds futures already pricing in nearly 90% for an interest rate hike of 25 basis points come, I think it's the 21st of March, the actual date. But looking at some of the comments, one in particular that jumped out that he said, this was in the Q&A with the politicians, which as you can see is still ongoing. He said one important one on inflation, um, where he said that recent data has increased his confidence about inflation will move higher. Now, to me, in general terms, I don't think that's too much of a deviation uh, from the current script because if the Fed are going to execute three rate hikes as planned for this year, well then obviously this is contingent that inflation is going to move up. But obviously people are quite sensitive on the inflation subject as we've seen at the beginning of this month and it was really the combination of the strength of consumers confidence in addition to the upbeatness and the optimism of Fed's Powell particularly on the subject of inflation that really kind of led to this hawkish monetary move that we've seen play out in the various assets so um, just having a look one key thing that we were looking at was uh, dollar strength so if I just bring up the euro dollar chart, you can see here though a pretty decent line of previous support that came in back on the what would have been the 9th of February. Uh, we got close to testing that and what was really interesting was, uh, well let me just bring up cable firstly as well. Similarly, we had a recent technical point of significance to the downside as just a, a simple support level from back on the 22nd, that also holding up uh, on that recent run lower. Uh, and we have bounced quite nicely so far uh, but it was equities when they started to come under some pressure uh, this is when it did get quite interesting because what we had was the Nasdaq was leading the sell-off in the US equities the Nasdaq had already broken below its pivot so let me just bring the major three indices up uh, in one chart above one another so what we've got here is you've got the Nasdaq at the top you've got the S&P in the middle and you've got the Dow at the bottom. So what, what I was really watching was when the sell-off was happening, the NASDAQ was already through that level. The S&P was then flirting and broke pivot, but the Dow was still sitting higher above. And as the equity market started coming under some pressure, 
what you started to see was the euro dollar started to respond quite nicely to that support point as did cable so the dollar was backing off slightly and then that pivot level looked pretty solid that it was going to hold uh, at that point so although the market movement and momentum was quite high at that point uh, we were talking about on the mic um, on trading live about that dow level was key and if the other assets as they were start to bounce like we were seeing in the forex market then consequently that level is probably more stronger to hold uh, and actually I know there was one or two other traders that uh, that took the long on the second test that we got down at that pivot and then if I make this chart a bit bigger uh, entry point if I just redo it they got in on that second test there and then exited quite nicely up at the previous range low which you can see is kind of identified by these points here so really nice move managed to get out and again the important thing was you're still in a high degree of volatility uh, Powell is still speaking live so just closing out the position uh, fairly promptly and so a couple of points I guess to take away from today's session as a whole um, for the more experienced guys well they did a really great job they just really sat on their hands through most of the morning and waited for the Powell speech and the North American data and then traded accordingly uh, and I think of the couple of guys here sat on the floor not one of them lost money today which is which is absolutely fantastic but the guys who are new and have only just transitioned from sim to live I think discipline is absolutely key got to be more disciplined because at the moment quite a few of you were getting into uh, a lot of trades this morning when ultimately uh, the market it was waiting for a bigger event and as we were expecting as we were talking about in the briefing this morning the bigger prevailing move came after Powell spoke so again discipline is key and that doesn't mean just discipline in terms of just the trade in itself this means discipline for the day identifying where the peak of interest might be where the best opportunities might arise and then just sticking to that game plan uh, and not getting involved in market movement which really for the best part of the European session was fairly dull uh, and very tight ranges um, overall in summary though although equities are just pulling back down a little bit at the moment overall I don't think that this Powell speech really I know it has had a market impact as we've just discussed but it, I don't see it really changing the narrative too much for the right here right now in terms of what the Fed are communicating from a monetary policy point of view what I would be expecting though is that March is still a very big meeting for the Fed and it's totally nothing to do with the rate hike I am 100% expecting that to occur the only thing that could stop that would be something completely unexpected out external of the US happening but it's the projections of course that will be key and then the communication that will couple that with the press conference as to whether or not the Fed are going to be more ambitious and confident that we're going to get four not three rate hikes for the time being the Fed are on three uh, and we've got the status quo all right quick look at the calendar for tomorrow uh, and then we'll wrap it up there and I'll let you guys uh, enjoy your evening so a couple things overnight just to be aware of so looking from China specifically you get your uh, manufacturing non-manufacturing PMI numbers uh, going into the European morning um, French GDP uh, JFK consumer sentiment from Germany these are not going to be they're not really going to shape the movement of European assets I'd say for the uh, for the morning uh, you've got the unemployment rate though uh, coming out for Germany uh, to have a look out for inflation though is going to be the main thing so this will be your main data point for tomorrow morning uh, and obviously if you have been looking in the short-term interest rate futures in the stirs market euro dollar futures in fixed income not FX have been seeing some really sharp movements of late so irrespective of some of the let's say concerns that might have amounted from heightened policy tightening from renewed inflation fears markets are still pretty uh, pretty much positioning themselves uh, that inflation is definitely going to return and that's what the the short end of the curve is reflecting at the moment so be very interested to see 
uh, the pace of which inflation is tracking in the eurozone at the moment that'll be tomorrow we get the second reading of US GDP tomorrow afternoon and we get one of the Fed's preferred measurements of tracking prices which is the PCE number that will be coming alongside that data release Chicago PMI pending home sales and the weekly oil inventory so of course we'll get the API's later on tonight finally from a, a Brexit point of view in terms of today specifically it's not about Brexit it's about the dollar but come Friday when Theresa May outlines her Brexit latest view it's going to be about the pound so today was very much about the dollar tomorrow you're going to get the EU publish their draft Brexit withdrawal agreement now I don't think this is going to impact the market why because we already know what the documents going to say it already has been leaked to the press earlier this morning the conservative Brexiteers have already responded pretty much outright rejecting the idea um, that the UK must remain subject to European court rulings indefinitely so I don't think you're gonna get any shocks there it's really Friday for sterling traders it'll be more interesting when May speaks all right come out to five o'clock uh, if you're in the UK obviously take care of getting home the weather conditions are, are not great at the moment all being well I'll see you tomorrow morning okay take care